All right, we are now recording. This is June 14th. Tim is passing to you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today is June 14th. This is the Sandbox Reviews. So let's just get started. Uh, the first one is Clusterpedia. Um, the Clusterpedia is, seems to be in the multi-cluster space. Um, and say, if you have a lot of clusters, then uh, they help you find where things are. Um, has anybody looked at uh, in depth? It's pretty early stage. Um, I mean, it's like six months old. Um, I think, although, I think, yeah, I was just going to say the idea looks good. Uh, it's more like a discovery thing to see what's running in which cluster. But I agree also because like one contributor basically has all the commits and there's a second one that starts to pick up, but uh, it's been like all the rest is very small contributions. Yeah, very young, but it seems like a well-situated project and I can see a need for it in the space. The only concern that I have is around the uh, resource editing capabilities and the access control associated with that because originally reading through the documentation sounds like it's read only so it's stateless checks and providing that information back but later on it starts to discuss the ability to offer command and control over those resources and I'd be very curious as to how they propose doing that and what sort of access control mechanisms they have for a plan for integration so I, I would recommend that they talk to the stag if we choose to accept them yeah um it, i do see that one person is doing the heavy heavy lifting here uh iceberg um but i think you know there is a decent idea that uh, we should give it a shot i think yeah there's a clear use case there also to synchronize resources across clusters this is something they state at the start this is everyone struggles with this right um yeah. and they do have two repositories uh yeah th this makes sense um one person may have done the heavy lifting and the other person has more than 10 percent of the commits although i haven't looked at lines of code and, and real code right um, but there are some other people coming along and it it like others have said it's a legitimate use case um i didn't realize i guess i need to go look deeper about the editing capabilities i only went through the viewing capabilities which is where i'd seen the need so yeah, I agree they should talk to um, the security tag just because when you've got you know the ability to edit across all of those clusters, that brings in a lot of opportunity for security issues. Okay, um, so uh, are we ready to vote? Any other thoughts? Hang on, question. Are we voting or are we going to have them go be reviewed by security tag? I think we can accept them and then they can talk to the stack. Uh, there, is okay. no, there is no rush. Got it. All right. The vote is open. Thank you. Um, I need to vote as well. It's true. You need to find chat. Yes. <laughs> yes, I don't know where to look. <laughs> okay. Plus one. Yes. Okay. Now I found my chat window. Two, three, four, five, six. Harry, waiting on you. Harry? Yeah, I'm back. Yes. I'm uh, need you to vote on Clusterpedia, please. I'm I'm right now on my phone, so I'm trying to figure out how can I do that. Oh, that's, no. that's what I'm oh. doing. <laughs> yeah, you can voice it, and uh, I will cast it for you. How's that? I'm uh, I'm supportive on this project, actually. Okay, okay. so that is a plus one. one. Yeah, it passes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right, oh, now I found it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> so the next one is called Turn Buckle. Um, and actually there is one more project from the same people, Palette. Uh, those two, I think we need to take it up together. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. 
Sure. Um, yep. So this provides a policy model. I mean, it's 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 literally uh, got under a hundred commits. Less than ten issues, no PRs, and it, it is extremely no. early. No stars. And it's uh, the way it's developed. It's just been developed in a couple of spikes. Yeah. Right. Without active, uh, it, like it had only had a minor change, I think, to CI in the last bunch of months. So it doesn't look like it's even being actively developed right now. They have no forum for discussion or communications channels as well for contributions. Just issues seems to be the only place for it. And even the issues, they don't seem to be managing very well. Well, seems to be from Sienna. The, the only issues are from themselves. Yeah. So, I was also going to say, like, the, even the actual implementation, it, it looks more like a cap to the scheduler. Or, like, right. And, and they're also talking. Yeah. yeah. They were also talking about cube fed as well, right? Uh, which is yeah, which old. is kind of old. Yeah. It seems like a very specific use case that maybe they had internally and they wanted to to open source, which is admirable. But at the same time, comparing to other projects, um, in the last couple of months, there has been no contributions whatsoever compared to projects that we reviewed earlier. Like even it's been on the market for six months, we had contributions from several companies and there is like a very kind of visible disparity um, in, right. in the interest from the community on this one, on these two ones actually. I was, I was thinking if there is a possibility for them to collaborate with one of the Kubernetes SIGs more closely and maybe have a cap around it um and enhance Kubernetes overall rather than just having as an independent project um i'm trying to understand how it will survive as well because looking at the roadmaps um i can see that yes support for multi-cluster that's great but like what's next because i feel like it's going to struggle to to have extra enhancements to itself as a project um, yeah and, and for pallet i went and i looked at it uh, because they talked about Kubernetes scheduling, and I realized uh, they never showed up in the meeting minutes for SIG scheduling over there either. So it doesn't look like they've engaged with them as far as I can tell. Yeah. So let's do that. Uh, let's. And the, the do... state for pilot, just to add, the state for pilot looks very much the same. And all it does is an implementation of co scheduling or gang scheduling. There's other projects that do that with other maturities. So it's not filling a hole or anything. So they have three people to talk to. One is the CNCF working group for batch and uh, the Kubernetes working group for batch and the six scheduling in Kubernetes. So we need to yeah. tell them to. Uh, so I would also add that Palette should probably talk to SIG security as well. There is a potential use case with that to schedule a security pod to execute scans, but you can do that with any of the other scheduling opportunities. It's uh, batch, uh, SIG scheduling, and SIG security. Yeah. And Please the projects that. just don't look very active, right? If something's going to move from sandbox to incubation to graduation, um, I like to see a project look like it's going to be active and have a life. And if it's just going to get the occasional um, work done here or if it was done out as a proof of concept and now it looks really cool but it hasn't found a place yet like what's going to happen if it becomes a sandbox project is it just going to have that same thing and then linger and die or is there going to be something that's going to lead it to incubation does it have that opportunity there do we do we see that and i'm struggling to see where it would go for that right now um, so my first reaction here is like if they can do caps and if they get things into uh, existing projects that would be the better fit um, rather than uh, having a standalone mini project for a smaller use case. Um, it's better to be part of uh, a bigger, larger story uh, for them. Okay. Um, so uh, can we move on to the next one? Yep, that's fine. Moving on. So the next one is open cost. 
Uh, this seems to be the cube cost is the company and open cost is the project name. Yeah, I had a couple of questions like, like clearly the project is, seems popular and has traction. Uh, there's, but there's two parts. One is that they mention a specification for open cost and then the implementation. And it's it's also not clear if open cost is the full coup cost or if it's like a bit of coup cost. Uh, that was the only question I had is like, what's the relationship with coup cost moving forward? And uh, is there anything being kept only in coup cost that is not in open cost? Things, things like this. Yep, I would agree. They look like a well-situated project and would be a good candidate to engage with the Environmental Sustainability Working Group. Um, their contributor file is pretty robust, but they don't have any community meetings scheduled or at least discussed at all. Yeah, I read somewhere that open cost is the engine or something. I forget exactly where I read that. Yeah, I, I also understood that there's like the specification and then it's like the reference implementation. Mm -hmm. So, but it, but it's not clear what's the relationship to cost. So that's actually a good good thing to call out since the since this project both includes a specification and a reference implementation, the intent is to keep them as a singular project, correct, instead of breaking them apart. Cause we have I think we have a little bit of both within the foundation where we have just a spec that's its own project and then a separate one as a reference implementation and in other cases they're merged um, yeah I think, in this case think, it would be the together would be the better way to do it uh, sorry I think, go well, I think all the specs have a reference implementation there might yeah. be a separate one as well like with notary and stuff where there's a there's still a reference implementation as if uh, I think for all of the specs have have something that's a, at least a reference implementation. So I think this kind of fits on that point of view, but there's different, there's kind of different views of what a reference implementation is, whether it's designed for production use or it's to test the spec. I think all those things can be worked out, right? Um, you know, yeah. we can tell them that, hey, come on in, um, as a single project um, and let us know exactly which part of cube cost will be coming in. Uh, yeah, and, and from this, you know, they're actually getting active contributions from people outside of cube cost, the company, like from Stackwatch and Bolt Software, they're already actively contributing to it from outside. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Too. There's a lot of, uh, there's some momentum on the project, even at KubeCon, you can see people talking about. It. Yeah, and the other thing that I like is that, that they're using so many of the other projects um, that we have here. So, um, I had one question in regards to um, the management of the project, because kind of it separated from KubeCost initially, and a lot of community members and a lot like of contacts, they refer to KubeCost um do we want that to be separate like to be open cost only and it has like its own management community rather than allocating that or for it to follow under a company um overall we normally deal with that as part of onboarding so it's fine right, so if it's not fully separated now does it mean it's going to have its own organization in github or we're fine to leave it within the under no, the... it would have its own organization Amazing. That was something which I was, I do remember we did something about that, but I was not sure if it was during the onboarding um, process. Yeah, but no, as long no. as they kind of de-brand KubeCost as much as possible, especially when it comes to to the kind of the contacts and reaching out, then I think that's, um, that's a good one for me. Uh, so separate from this discussion is um, whether they can have a company called KubeCost, where Cube is a play on uh, our project and you know that goes into trademarks issue mark issues i think we can keep that separate uh, and say i think you've already i think you've already lost on the cube one cube is not a trademark i know yeah. it is not uh, exactly. kubernetes and khs are the trademarks cube isn't 
So I know that, that is why it's separate. So <laughs> it's super important for later. Yes, Amy. Okay. Um, so are we ready to vote? Okay. That's one. Uh, Harry. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The any additional commentary that Amy needs to tell them. They'll review the recording anyway, so it should be fine. Okay. We can move on. Yeah. Iraqi mesh is the next one. We are on five. Iraqi mesh. Um so uh who is able to talk about Iraqi Mesh? Um, lots of networking stuff here. And they were talking about, and Envoy doesn't really uh, want to deal with uh, non-HTTP protocols. So the, was, the, they want to do more of those. Was that the reason we'd sent it back? Because they, they're they coming back to us after we sent them away. Was it, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't grab the notes on it, why we sent them away last time. Yeah. Oops. In the meantime, I had a question because they put uh, the CNCF logo at the end of their GitHub, uh, saying they are part of the CNCF landscape. Yeah, I saw project. that too. I asked about it and I was told it's very odd, but I don't actually think it breaks any rules. Okay. I went and asked. Okay. Yeah, that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It Enriches the <laughs> landscape, sure. Yes, awesome. <laughs> we want more people to enrich uh, for sure. Uh, okay, so um, networking folks, any networking folks here? My only question, I, I think it's not like really a concern, but um, it seems to be quite well integrated with Istio by default. Yeah. Um, they actually integrate with Alpha um, standards, which it was. Um, or as enemy, if I'm not mistaken. I um, think they mentioned it's Istio only. Yes, it is Istio only. They have six releases. It's a reasonably active project. Yeah. Um, their documentation has a lot of circular links and the doc site is fairly lightweight. Um, they do have a multi-year roadmap, but the contributions for the entire project are skewed to just one individual. Um, and the readme explicitly calls out that if you do want to contribute, you have to email them to be able to do so interesting yes so i i'm i'm concerned over the love the difficulty in getting more contributors to grow the project they also mentioned on why the cncf answer on point four they mentioned that they support a steel only and supporting yeah. others is not a priority yeah i'd like to see more support beyond just istio um, so the person, uh, Hua Bing Zhao, uh, is an engineer in Tencent Cloud, and he's the one who's done the heavy lifting. So um, there is a strong connection to both Envoy and Istio. Um, I have a feeling that they would be okay to do more things uh, like the way we do stuff here. Well, you know, if we think of it as an extension on top of Istio or something that works with it, other projects that only work with Kubernetes and say don't work with one of the other schedulers out there, we don't tell them that they need to go work with two schedulers. So when it comes to something that kind of extends or adds on to something, when do we draw the line to say it's okay that it's just on this one platform and it doesn't work with other platforms? Where do we draw that line? Uh, I think this falls I, under, like, from my perspective, I feel like they should be on the project roadmap um, because it's it's in their interest to grow their use cases and adoption. So I presume if there's going to be more interest in other integrations, I think they should prioritize that. But I don't think it should fall under us. If they don't do that, like, inevitably, like, it's going to happen that they will fade away within the landscape or they're just going to survive on the few use cases. Uh, Amy, I'm not pushing back on them because they, in uh, number four here, they have mentioned that 
uh, it is not a priority right now because there are more urgent yeah. things to fix. Um, so I'm not going to push back on them. And I would actually want to put this to a vote. Yeah, I agree. I just wanted to add, like I mentioned earlier, but I do think the project is very cool, like adding non-HTTP or gRPC support. But yeah. they do mention that the added value is to like be the top layer without integrating with one solution. So it's kind of fair to say that they should look at other service mesh implementations as well. And it's sandbox. They can get to it eventually. Yeah, as long exactly. as they're interested. In Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just feedback. I, I think it's it's not a stopper. Yeah. Um, Istio is, Istio okay. is a CNCF project yet, is it? But it's... Uh, no. Yeah, not yet. Correct. <laughs> not as of today. <laughs> it's in process. It's in process. Yeah. I am happy to kind of vote on it, like, because I'm, I'm a bit concerned about Emily's comment on, con like, we sh they should streamline the contributions. It shouldn't be gatekeeped by one person. So if the caveat is that the contributing guidelines are going to be updated, I'm going to, I'm happy to vote on it. Otherwise, um, I'm happy to kind of maybe rethink this a bit. So, uh, well, we'll say uh, we can do a vote and then say subject to them uh, opening up the contribution uh, to everybody, right? Uh, to follow yep. the normal processes that we use in the CNCF community, right? Yep. Well, yeah, or, so, or adding a adding a a new governance process that explicitly yeah, calls out yeah. how how our maintainers can be added. And... Okay. So let's vote for it then, with the caveat that they fix their docs to be more inviting to other people and not just an email. Three, four, five, six. Hurry. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So the next one is Curve. Curve came to us before um, and uh, we sent it to six storage, uh, a tag storage rather, and the tag storage came back with a recommendation to accept it as um, you know, a sandbox project. So I think they are okay with it. If they are okay with it, I think we should be okay with it too. But let's just go through the usual things and make sure that things are okay. Uh, it's got GPL and GPL v3 licenses on the top. I can't see uh, what they apply to. So again, the caveat here we would add is uh, they clean up the licenses only then we'll accept, right? Well, if it is GPL or GPL v3 because it's using tools that, I mean, other storage stuff potentially is, then they'll have to get an exception from the governing board. They won't be able to clean it okay. up if they, it's not their code, which is likely. It's not that code. Right. So we send these back out and then we got a recommendation with the, from the tag. So um, here the caveat would be, we'll ask a question that can, would you be able to get rid of? Um, uh, the, sorry, the license for well does have, um, which parts of what? So, um, some of it's in tools, some of it, yeah, some of it's in the tools directory. They're going to have to go through the governing board, I think, for this. It looks to me like it might not be part of the core software, it might be all in tooling. It's external, so it might be that they can agree an exception. Uh, so, do do we have precedents where uh, uh, this kind of stuff is in a separate repository, um, and you know, during during CI they'll pull both repositories and do the builds, I guess. 
Um, no. No. We've okay. got exceptions where things are uh, part of, you know, Linux kernel code and things like that, where it's GPL licensed, but. So in terms of precedence, then we have open EBS and uh, there was one more, uh, right? Um, where Longhorn. Have... Sorry? Uh, the, for the license, you mean? Yeah, for the license. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because they, it looks like they're vendoring in the outside tools, which means they're distributing and, and they have it. It's not like in their environment, they just go and install it, right, and use what's already existing. Um, because there are certain rules around exception if it's included in your distro and how that happens. Um, but this looks like they're actually including it and doing that. And so. So the caveat would be a thorough li license review, right? We accept based on a clean license review. Well, I mean, it'll, it'll have to be G, GB approval or rework. Yeah. Okay, so and so. GB approval. So two caveats. I I also had one question because I don't remember. Like the, it is kind of in the area of Open EBS and Longhorn, no? yeah. Because they they do claim that the storage projects in the CNCF are not performance and convenient enough to support this. And there is currently no project with the same position positioning as curve. Maybe there are details, but in in general, it's the same area, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I noticed that too. Okay, it's just I don't I don't think the statements are are very fair. I, it's not a again not a stopper. It's just a comment. So I I have a quick question about that. Um, are is there any expectation that we make requests to do comparison of projects? from an independent party, because this is very biased. Uh, usually we work through this, uh, uh, the processes that we have with annual reviews and things like that, where we tone down what people are claiming uh, and make them play fair with each other, um, you know, propose some benchmarks or something where uh, both of them can, um, you know, multiple projects can, Run the same benchmarks and say something about it, I guess. Okay. Okay. So let's let's vote on this, Amy. Vote is open. Um, two caveats we said, right? Two caveats. And we just one question. Um, shall we vote on it before the GB approval? Uh, the GB vote on license. Can we do that? as a recommendation uh, from the TOC? So the, it needs to go into this uh, weird space where we, we'll tell the GB that we want to bring this in, so they need to help us uh, do it, right? We can't cool. go otherwise. So. I'll, I'll step in here. Um, so the way that this will work is you all will vote to be able to accept them as a project. From there, they'll apply to the governing board to be able to get an exception for licenses. OK, awesome. Okay. Cool. cool. So the caveat is going to be the license. Uh, this is not uncommon. We've seen a few of these before, so. Awesome. Okay. Okay, that is code. So in one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Harry is already in. Yes. Okay. Um. So we are done with curve palette. We are done with open feature. Um, so open feature actually pinged me just before KubeCon EU um, asking about, hey, can we do something quickly kind of thing. So they're number eight on our list here today. Uh, so I was looking for Golang stuff and I don't remember seeing it. Did anybody see uh, support for Golang? I didn't see Go. I saw, you know, Java. The, I think the Python no. was a stub and uh, no. Node. Node is where their examples were even come out of if you look in the playground. Right. Yeah. Is there any other project that does this in the sense? Yeah. I uh, wasn't sure actually. And I am struggling to figure out like what exactly we are doing here, um, which is going to be useful to multiple people, right? 
I think it's the flag feature thing where you basically deploy instead of having feature branches, you just deploy in production and you do feature flag to enable disable things. Yeah, it, it's configuring it's configuration management around feature flags for your application. And the system they have here is it looks like it's pluggable and it's spec based. So while they've got a reference implementation um, and SDKs to work with it, they also have a spec so you can swap out things in the background. And here they compare to some others. So if you go look at something like Flagsmith, mm -hmm. uh, they're doing that same kind of thing of the, the feature flag stuff. Okay. It, uh, landscape research. Okay. Feature enabled or not. So it makes a call to some backend service to get that information back. Mm -hmm. And this is an open source one built around Kubernetes and cloud native technologies, where the other ones, if you start looking at them like Flagsmith and CloudBees, you're looking at uh, things that are either proprietary or um, outside of the cloud native architectures. Okay. That's their, their, their differentiators to say it's built on the cloud native stuff rather yeah. than um, the proprietary or just stuff outside of that. And it could be the first one we have in this area in this sense yet. So it's quite I want to say DataWire had a very similar open source project many, many, many years ago, but they got rid of it because they didn't have a good use case or the market wasn't ready for it. Uh, looks like basic tooling was from Diego. And there's a bunch of contributors to the spec. I mean, they have a solid roadmap, clear community engagement. They look well supported. Yeah, it, it reminds me a little bit of GitHub Scientist um, because it's that same permission model based thing, a little different, but similar idea. What does the operator do? Um, the operator uh, is a way of having kind of that reference implementation and then how is it connected up to the things in your cluster. Okay. Right. It's, it's, they're using cloud native technologies. How do you get this stuff inside of Kubernetes and specify your flag configurations using Kubernetes stuff? Yeah. Okay. CRDs in, in this case. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so any other questions? Can we vote? Hey, Harry, good job. <laughs> Laptop. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Amy, let's vote, please. What is open? Katie. Voting on it. Yes, it passes. Yay, let's go to QWarden now. Uh, QWarden is a policy engine web, web assembly, um, similar to what OPA does, I guess. Um, distributed using regular container registries. And so the difference is uh, OPA is rego only. And here you, they are saying you can use WASM and you can use any uh, language of your choice that Wasm supports. They, ha they have a Rego implementation in Wasm as well. Presumably, you, uh, maybe, I'm not sure if it's using the um, upstream one from OPA. Okay. So it, uh, It's a custom implementation because this is written in Rust. Okay. Yes. Um, let me look at they do use projects. Oh, look at that. Yeah, their their roadmap is pretty robust. And I think they had more than one, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm looking from here, project stash two. Yeah, if you go through their GitHub repo, they've got a few. I think this was one of the projects that had a few other things lurking about. They've got their roadmap, they have development. Okay. Yes, yeah, I, I was looking at the slash one, which is the development one, yeah. Yeah, um, the contributing information is fairly robust, but it's more focused about how to get it installed rather than how to contribute to the project. Right. Um, and they have fairly consistent commits. 
um, with two two primary maintainers. I mean, overall, this seems like a, a good project and I, I can see a, a good fit for it in the ecosystem amongst the other policy engines. Absolutely. So the other one fun here was the policy hub. Um, it seems to be like a website where people can upload their policies, I guess, or I, I guess this is the download portion. I don't know how they, there is no login. So they yeah, might be operating so off of a GitHub repo or something. Yeah, supposedly you can submit policies to them. They'd be accessible here. So it's, it's more about policy exchange. So if there is a policy that makes sense for a vast number of organizations or industry verticals, they could yeah. potentially upload them here. And, and I know yeah. they'd like to eventually integrate with Artifact Hub to get them listed there. Um, and where people can list their own, but until they're part of a foundation or in the CNCF, Artifact Hub isn't going to list them. Um, and so that's why they have their own as well right now. Okay. So, so one of my questions here is like, it might not be something for, for Sandbox review, but in the future, I see like a lot of components uh, being part of keyboarding. Um, going back to Operator Hub, uh, actually it was... What was the project called? We actually had to split it up. Uh, the hub itself was uh, a standalone project that we voted on with operator SDK. That was the one being separate uh, in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So I presume like once some of the these consolidations are gonna happen, it is gonna be more clear for us of the directions of the project. Like again, like my concern, I wanna say concern observation um, is that there are like multiple components currently, which we are voting on collectively but this might change um, if they want to kind of move up to incubation. So here, one, one observation here is um, all of these are from QWardens itself. Uh, and if you look at the uh, you know, URL for the container image, they are also QWarden slash policies. So I, there is no third party that has added their own stuff here. I guess this is just a way for them to show a UI where uh, people can pick things up from easily. So um, yes, we can add a caveat saying, hey, uh, the policy hub uh, we are assuming is uh, going to fold into the artifact hub and uh, we are voting on um, you know, the rest of the things. Well, in the operator SDK and operator hub were separated out because the operator SDK could be used and then those assets not hosted within operator hub if you wanted to. So there was also some legality around the hosting that the two needed to be separated. Katie, so I think it's a great um, like parallel to this, but I think it's a little bit different in this offering that we don't have the, the weirdness when all these assets just feed into that. Yeah, and, and here they actually say they want to integrate with the Artifact Hub right in there. Right there. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Okay, so I think we are all on the same page then. Um, let's vote then. It's open. Okay, thank you. That's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, Q Warden. You're gonna have a party mat today for Q Warden. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. They're in Europe. <laughs> okay, Hydra. Uh, so, has anybody looked at Hydra? Yeah, it looks like it's a lot uh, monitoring framework for services running on Kubernetes um, with expected state testing, and I think that's the key value on this is that you can assert what your expected state is supposed to look like, and it will continually, supposedly, evaluate whether or not that remains true. Um, overall, they have a contributing file, decent content, no community meetups. They have a security markdown file, which is the first one out of the one we've reviewed, but it's a template, um, so it doesn't really help. Um, and there's one primary contributor. It's super early doesn't look like there's been a ton of activity. And it's GPL. It's it GPL v3. Yeah, it's GPL v3. It has one dependency that is GPL v3. And that dependency is developed by the 
same person who developed this. So he picked a license for both. Okay. Um, um, there is, however, another contributor, so he would have to um, relicense it. Um, so yeah. I think it's, um, I, I would, it, it, it's, it's, it's a no without relicensing it to Apache before it starts. And also it's way too early, right? Um, yeah, that's right. No, no. Six, six months of help, uh, six months of time, I mean. Yeah. But yeah. maybe um, some, additional, some additional feedback is that there's actually no other project that would do something similar. So there, there is potentially value here. So it's not like, it's not worth proceeding. Or, or pushing for forward. Okay. He does some comparisons with 24-7 and similar projects for external monitoring of services. So that's quite interesting. It would help if it was easier to find the overview of what it was. Like it was yeah, they're on the readme, for example. Yeah, there's just they need some help with their docs. So I think getting it in a in a much better place for potentially getting people interested in using it, it's going to take time. I, I'm torn. Uh, should we give them space to work here or not, right? Um, I would highly recommend we, giving them six months to come back. We, we can't approve it because it will not be approved for license yeah. reasons. So it's mm -hmm. like they, they have to go away and relicense it if they even want it to be considered. OK. So plus one on that. So, um, okay, Amy, you have Hydra. Will need to be relicensed, reapplied in six months. Yep, sounds good. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. DevStream. Uh, this seems like a collection of many things. It's a tool. Have. It's a tool stack builder. Um, it, Merico is the company behind it and DevStream is one of their two open source offerings that they have. They have good documentation, a good roadmap, consistent contributions, two main contributors, community meetups, and a Slack. And they also have security files as well, which is nice. It seems like an easy way to get your developer environment up and running very quickly so it's quite cool dtm init apply verify delete destroy developer they have a developer guide they have growth ladders development workflow project layout Ooh, let's look at architecture okay um I think we don't see any red flags here. So this looks good. Um, Apache license, yeah. 26 contributors right there. It's at least four or five people in the recent past. Okay, um, ready to vote? Okay. Plus one. Uh, okay, Harry, was that a plus one or a minus one? And Katie, there is a star. What does the star imply? Katie, Katie um, had some challenges with the keyboard. It is fine. <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, lots of challenges. Um, yeah. <laughs> Passes. Yeah. We can move on. Okay. Uh, Hexa Org Policy Orchestrator. Uh, this is from. Uh, let me remind myself. Strata. Strata is the name of the startup that is working on this. Um, Requiring cloud notary ways to identify, identify, address identity and policy. Cure no OPA are closer to what they're doing. Okay. Um, identity is fragmented across multiple clouds, technology stacks. I think their description is they have their own query language for identity 
and they integrate not only Kubernetes, but also all the public cloud providers and things like this in one place. Yeah, the AWS exactly. identity, GCP, Beyond Corp, Snowflake, and a ton of others. So is this aimed at people who are writing applications or the infrastructure people? I think I had a confusion there. I, I think it may be for anybody who has to deal with identity by making it one way to work with identity across multiple places, right? Because you'd have to query each individually using their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. This simplifies it. Yeah, I think that's it. That's my understanding as well. Yeah, so, it's interesting it, for sure, because that's a pain in the butt, but I don't. Their, their integration with other projects is curious though, because they say they integrate with Harbor because they store their images in the Harbor registry, which is, uh, I don't know, like I got to be confused. I guess the, the integrations are OPA, Kiverno, things like this. Hey, look at that, they have security MD too. Three applications, policy administrator, policy orchestrator server, demo application. Oops, wait, if I click on. There is some other curious information in the repo. Um, so while they do cover a few projects, their security file also describes other projects that might be within scope. And maybe I missed it on the main repo, but Hawk in particular. Where do you look here? Uh, on the security markdown file. Oh. Yeah, let me go there. Yeah. 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 Yes, what is Hawk? Yeah. yeah, what is Hawk? I'm not familiar with that. Is that yeah. part, of, part of a deliverable for this? Yes, uh, I see it, Hawk. Uh, on the first this one. Yeah, on the first one, yeah, it's- It's a dependency. Okay. So they're saying a dependency and here's- Hawk authentication scheme, yeah. essentially. I've okay. never heard of this. <laughs> So is it like, yeah, see, uh, the OAuth 2, it, I guess it's similar to that, right? Uh, that's where we stick in www authenticate. Is this a project, a different project though, the HIOS where Hawk is? Yeah, yeah this, this is not part of this. Hawk it is okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Hawk yeah. apparently a Mozilla, um, something that Mozilla has implemented. Yeah, th this is what you're looking at, right? Uh, it's a new yeah. HTTP authentication from 2012. Uh, yeah, formerly editor of OAuth specifications, so it's in the same family. Okay. But that's that's from 2012. Yeah. Article. Also, so the, the basically has one contributor now. Yeah, and it's like only six months old. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure that I feel like it has enough information to evaluate it effectively and understand what it's trying to do in the repo. Agreed with Justin. They they need to do some cleanup and confirm what what the project is actually going to be doing and what it entails and how it fits. Uh, I'd love to see more management around the more. I like roadmaps, but when there is a, a timeline attached to them, because Otherwise, the roadmap can be um, uh, well, kind of um, used, or if, I can't find the words anymore. Anyway, uh, kind of timelines to the roadmap. Otherwise, it's like um, it has no deliverables overall. Um, another thing which I was um, uh, kind of observed is that the issues at the moment they're not very well managed. Uh, they don't have descriptions. Um, they open by contributors, but it only has the title of the issue and that's pretty much it. 
which makes it very difficult for inviting for other contributors from the outside. So I would like to see a better management of that as well. Um, so, so reading that first paragraph here, it does say um, that uh, orchestrate identity and access policy across all your environments, right? Like whether you have, if you have mixed stuff, some running in AWS, some in GCP and some somewhere else, then it helps you, it gives you the tools to- To do something that's really not very well defined though. Yeah. What does orchestrate identity and access policy really mean? So yeah, I, I just- Is it, <laughs> I guess in my head, I'd put it as, policy is code, so to speak, and then it orchestrated that off there, so to think it, but maybe I have it wrong. So they, they use Rego and IDQL to do what they're doing. And I sent, I, where, where was I? Oops, yeah, uh, right there. Um, gives you control managing native policies across, including OPA policies. I think the value is that it does more than what the traditional Kubernetes tooling will do for policies. It will integrate with cloud providers and things like this. It, it thinks beyond thought, Kubernetes. Yeah. And I like the idea of it. And I mean, and to your point, Katie, about your feedback, I don't know that we typically expect timelines for sandbox though. It's like, yeah, is there anything blocking it? And does it have potential of something more fully formed that we would want it to go into incubation. I think it does fill a void today that it's difficult to manage these things across cloud providers. I don't see anything specific that I'd be like either licensing or it's just not a great idea that I would want to say no to. That's my two cents. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. So here it says Hexa translates and orchestrates IDQL policies into native policies for your application platform data and network systems unify our policy management. Yeah, I, and we don't have one of these here, right? So I, I'm inclined to at least take, take to a vote. So one, one last question. This is just for the policy orchestration. This does not include the IDQL language, right? Uh, it's IDQL language is in the same repository. Well, it, it's by the same org that, so that that's the other thing is, is, is it both or is it just the one? Uh, you are absolutely right. I don't see IDQL in this repository. So let's do hexa.org. Oh, where is There's IDQL? a comment in the submission for Sandbox about IDQL. Does it specifically say whether or not it's being contributed? Oh, look there, there is a policy directory and that has IDQL specifications. They also mention uh, so using the Contour as the ingress service and given the email messaging that we got earlier about Contour. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a potential issue for them to be successful moving forward. I Overall, I'm not comfortable with the lack of clarity in what it is that they're hoping to accomplish or how they're actually going to go about it mm -hmm. and what all this request entails. Okay, is that enough feedback to send them send it back to them. Um, so are we asking them to rewrite, you know, what is there or come, because we don't understand it well enough, or are we asking them to come back in six months? Which one is it? Has there been a tag they, they spoke with? Maybe this is the thing, but maybe, Maybe okay. that's going to clarify a bit of the message and the topic. Um, yeah. Because, uh, like, uh, as Emily mentioned, like, if you'd bring this to a vote, I would kind of hold myself because I don't have enough clarity. Like, generally, okay. I, I am not clear where exactly we put this project within the landscape. Okay. So, 
So the closest would be tax security. Let's ask them to go there. Yep. Okay. I, mean, I think it's very early. It's got 31 stars and eight forks. It's very, like, I, I'm perfectly happy with them coming back in six months when the, they should definitely talk to tech security and they should definitely clarify what they're trying to do. But six months seems a good uh, time for them. Yeah, I don't want to hold them for six months, um, but I do want uh, something returned back from uh, tax security. Um, so we can look at it again next time. And it's going to take a while for us to get there too. And, and I think I heard we had a question around IDQL, where yeah. that fits and, and what goes on with that. Is that part of this? Yes, that should be part of the question to tax security. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got through 12. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Um, and that was a good, good call. Thank you. Any objections to our next meeting being the 26th of July for Sandbox? Okay, good. seeing none, we'll, we'll track towards being able to do, I don't want to be able to put a meeting in August because it's so hard to get quorum in August, just generally. So July, see you then. Yes, bye. Thanks, bye, see bye you then. Bye. bye.